What's the name of the guy whose name is Harry? That may seem like kind of a funny f question, but the name of the guy whose name is Harry, isn't his name Harry? Yeah. Well, I'm asking this question because, um, because I want to look at some things like that. Um, what is the sign of the arc sign, the inverse sign of X? Well, that's like asking the question, what's the square of the square root of X? Don't those cancel each other out to give you X? Well, I think the answer is yes over here. Is, it, is this equal to X over here? And we have to be careful here, but the answer is yes. Uh, as we'll see, we've got to be careful over there, too. Um, how about the other way? Is the sine inverse of the sine of x equal to x? Is, do they completely undo each other? Question mark. Are these equal? These way? In this case, the answer is yes. And in this case, the answer is maybe. And I say maybe because this would be like doing this. If I take x and square it, and then take the square root, does that equal x? Not always. The thing is, if I take x to be negative 2, and I square it, and then I take the square root, that's the square root of 4, which is 2. I started with negative 2, I ended up with 2. What happened? Well, the thing is, squaring and square rooting aren't really inverses of each other completely. But as long as you stay within the right bounds, then it works. If I take 2 and square it, that's the square root of 4. I get back to the 2 that I put out. So as long as my input here is within the output of this function, then I'm OK. Likewise here. Um, if I looked at, uh, let's say, an angle of 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, if I say, what's the sine inverse of the sine of pi over 6? Well, the sine of pi over 6 is a half. This would be the sine inverse of a half. And the angle whose sine is a half, the small angle whose sine is a half, is pi over 6. That's fine. But if I take something that's out of that range, if I say, what's the sine inverse of the sine of 5 pi over 6? Remember, 5 pi over 6 is over there. Uh, 6 pi over 6 would be 180 degrees would be pi, right? Um, this is, so the reference angle here is a 30 degree angle. It's a pi over 6 angle. I've got side lengths of 1, 2, and the square root of 3. That one's negative. But I can look and see that the sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 over 2. So I'm saying, hey, this is the sine inverse of a half. Well, that's the same thing I have right here. So this is pi over 6. That the 5 pi over 6 was not within the range of the output here, so there isn't any way that this output's going to give it to me. The pi over 6 is within the range of the output, and so taking the sign, taking the inverse sign, gets me back to where I started from. Up here, you never can go wrong, right? In this situation, let's come, let's take a look at this stuff. Anything you want to do, what's the sign uh, of the angle whose sign is x? Now, first of all, x is restricted here. You can't just plug in any old x. I can't plug in a 7 because there isn't an angle whose angle is 7. So x is already restricted to being between minus 1 and plus 1. Right? And when I plug something in, I'm going to get an angle. So if I say plug in, uh, let's plug in a half. What's the sine inverse of a half? Once I figure that out, take the sine of it. Well, the sine inverse of a half, the angle whose sine is a half, 1 over 2 is pi over 6. What's the sine of pi over 6? It's a half, right? What's the name of the guy whose name is Harry? What's the sine of the angle whose sine is a half? It's a half. Okay. So in one direction, this works really nicely, that 
they just undo each other. The other direction you've got to be careful and it's just like over here. Right? If you're starting off with something that's in the range of your second function here, in the output of your second function, then you should get it back. But if you're starting with something that's not in that range, then you aren't going to get it back. You're going to get some other angle who's, who has the same sign, right, in this case. All right, um, other thing I want to do with these. Um, cosine and cosine inverse have similar properties. Tangent and tangent inverse have similar properties. Um, it's just a matter of being careful as to what, where your output is and where your input is. Okay. Um, I want to look at some other things too, like um, what is the sign? No, yeah, <laughs> let's try this again. What is the sign of the inverse tangent of two thirds? Wow, this right here is an angle, inverse tangent two-thirds. I've given you problems like this before. I've given you problems that look like this. Tangent of theta equals two-thirds. Find sine of theta. Right? That is, this is an angle. The angle whose tangent is two-thirds is an angle. Call it theta. There's my sine theta. What do I know about theta? Well, I know that its tangent is two-thirds. It is the angle whose tangent is two-thirds. So I may have given you a problem like this on the last test or a quiz or something. I didn't state it this way. I stated it this way. But it's the same It's the same thing. There's a triangle involved here. There is a triangle that has an angle right here whose tangent is two-thirds. This angle right here has got to be the inverse tangent of two-thirds. Right angle. So if this is two and this is three, then I've got an angle whose tangent is two divided by three. You tell me one trig function of an angle, I know all of them because I can take the Pythagoras and figure out this other side over here. I can figure out this other side. This other side is the square root of 9 plus 4, so it's the square root of 13. Now I do know something else because you might say, hey, there's another place where the tangent is 2 over 3. I might be off in the, you know, over there in the third quadrant. But inverse tangent doesn't give me third quadrant angles. Inverse tangent by choice only gives me fourth or first quadrant angles. Um, if the input was negative I'd be down in the fourth quadrant. If the input's positive I'm up here in the, in the first quadrant. Um, so, so I know I'm in the first quadrant and I know then that these are both positive and the hypotenuse is positive. So what's the sign of this angle whose tangent is two-thirds? Well, the sine of this angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. It's 2 divided by the square root of 13. By saying inverse tangent 2 thirds, you've told me two sides of the triangle. Pythagoras gives me the other side. I can get any trig function I want. Okay. I'm going to stop this video here, and on the next one I'm going to do another type of problems that you'll run into. Um, but anyway, um, things to take out of this video. Trig functions and inverse trig functions cancel themselves out almost, sort of like squaring and square rooting do almost. One direction works really nice, one direction you just got to be a little bit careful. Okay. There you go.